chapter 17, verse 40. He, David, took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag that he had, even in the scrip, and a sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about, he saw David. He disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to meet with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I'll give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beast of the fields. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. I like that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Amen. This day the Lord deliver thee into my hand, Excuse me, I left a word out. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. My goodness, David's got a confidence, don't he? Yes. And I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. And I'll give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air. And to the wild beast of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Oh, yes. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not by sword and spirit. For the battle is the Lord's, and he'll give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in, the fore, in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon the face of the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in his hand, in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. We're going to stop right there, but let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight. Lord, you know, God, our needs tonight. Father, you know, God, what we wrestled with. You know, God, these giants that we all face in our life. But God, help us tonight. That God, Lord, that to know, that to recognize that God, that you're bigger than our giants. That God, that you're bigger than our fears. You're bigger than our doubts. You're bigger than our uh, thoughts that we can come uh, think of you. And Father, we pray tonight that God give us a word, that God, Lord, we know this word's been preached many times, and we can't add to it, but God, I ask you, Lord, just to stir it up in our lives, and God, Lord, I ask you to give us the anointing that we need to preach this word. I pray that, God, you give us ears to hear, and a mind to understand, and a heart to receive what you have for us tonight. We love you, give you all the praise, we ask it in Jesus' name, and the church said amen. Amen. You may be seated. Conquering the giants of our lives. Amen. What are giants that I'm speaking about? We know that in the scripture, giants that David was facing was of a tribe of individuals whose height was well above the average person. Some say somewhere between 9, 10, or 11 feet tall. And they possessed great strength and great power. The giants that before us that we will have to fight if we are faithful to the Lord there will be those giants that you and I will have to face amen we'll have to face some of these things let me give you just a little bit uh, of uh, some of the giants that I want to kind of look at and not go through them individually but I want to just give you an idea of what I'm trying to come across with uh, difficulties can be a giant in our lives temptations can be a giant in our life. Major griefs, loneliness in times of struggles. Fears can be a giant. Doubts of oppression, depression, guilt, anxieties, 
lust, habits, and anger, unforgiveness, and strife. And there are so many more that we can talk about and things, but the Bible talks about it in Galatians 5 and 17, that these are the works of the flesh. In other words, can I tell you, listen to what Paul said in that verse, for the flesh lusts us against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Amen. Can I tell you, there is an internal battle that each one of us face in our lives. Amen. Each one of us, we face that natural man will fight that spiritual man. You know, even in your thoughts, you can know God's big. You can even know that he's great and mighty. You can call back upon the times in your life previously where he has moved in miraculous ways but at that particular time right there you will find that that flesh that flesh wants to doubt your uh, uh, the ability of God and, and that spirit wants to say yes God can and God will those are the battles those are the giants that I'm looking at tonight and we all have them every one of us they may differ in name but we have them. Right. We will find that them scattered throughout our lives. The way of righteousness sometimes is hard. And many a battle will try to uh, try all of your nerves and your endurance. We should not be surprised when these difficulties and conflicts come upon us. Sometimes the number of these giants that attack us at once can be overwhelming and force behind us or behind them can seemingly be overbearing. That's right. Amen. Amen. When these giants come to us many times, we'll have fears. We're fearful of the unknown. What's going to happen? What's going to go on here? What's going to be the outcome of this situation? Amen. Amen. Fear of devastation. Fear of failure. That's one thing, and I'll be honest with you, that's one of my faults right there, is failure. I hate to fail. And I'm a failure. I'm not a perfect human being. Oh, God, I've got probably more faults than most of us in here. But nonetheless, that is a thing that bothers me most of all. Or one of the things is failure. I hate it. And I have to deal with it. That's mine. Fear of failure. And there can be other sorts that away. Fear, though, in itself is not a bad thing because God put fear in us for a reason. Yeah. You climb up next to you, you walk over next to a cliff that's got a 200-foot drop-off. Uh, you know, you might get a little sprayed right there. That's a good fear. Right. Amen? Yeah. That's a good fear. If you come up on a poisonous snake, amen, that snake you know is going to bite you if you get to... You know what? You, you, if you got enough sense, you'll take a good grubbing hole to it. Yeah. But you fear that I do. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 So that's a good fear. But there's a fear that torments. There's a fear that comes into our minds and, and into our lives that we cannot seemingly get over it sometimes. And that is a fear of torment. And that is not of God. Fear within certain bounds will make us brace for what's happening and it will make us realize just how much and how great we need the Lord. Isaiah 35 and 4 says this, Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save us. Thank God tonight. Thank God tonight. You know, fear of the Lord is a good thing. Yes. Huh? Man. The worst part of our giants, the worst part of the giants in our lives, do you know one of the biggest things that I believe probably most of us deal with, the giant, is the imagination. Right. Amen. Huh? Man. We all got imagination, don't we? We all got it. Making things bigger than what they are. Yes. Huh? Making things more difficult than what they are. Making things worse 
Listen to what Paul wrote about in 2 Corinthians. Very familiar scripture. Chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Those giants, if you will. Yeah. This is just casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I love that fifth verse. Listen to it. Casting down imaginations. That imagination that builds that thing bigger than really what it is. Yeah. Building that thing so much more powerful and so much more devastating than it really is. Bible, uh, Paul said, casting down those imaginations that will exalt itself in the image or in the knowledge of God. Amen. In other words, we know, God, you can do this. Yes. I've heard about you, God, how you can do this. Yes. I've seen you, God, work in this way. Amen. I've seen you, God, but yet in our knowledge, the enemy wants to build this up. Come on. And it will exalt itself against what we know God. that God right. can do it. That's right. Huh? That's good. Amen. That's good. The worst part, and I've got a weird imagination, believe me. Jackie will tell you, I think too much. I get I get by myself, man. I'm telling you what, look out, man. I build things up so big, but I have to try to learn from that. I have to try to get myself to the point to where I say, okay, God, you know, Lord, this ain't you. Come on. You know what? Tormenting fear, that's not you, God. That's right. We read in Psalms 31 and 24, it said, "Be of good courage, and He will strengthen your heart, all of you." All ye that hope in the Lord. We need to remember that God only allows the warfare when victory is possible. Come on. Man. Huh? That's right. God only allows you in the battle if he can't beat if he if only if he can bring you through victorious. Think about that. Huh? Amen. Come on, church. Come on. God will never let us go through something he can't bring us through the battle. Yeah, right. He'll never allow us into anything that he will not give us the victory yeah. over. Yeah. Amen. Because if it did, that'd make God a liar, doesn't it? But you know what? Great is God and greatly to be praised. So God will never let us go through anything that he will not bring us through victorious. Right. Amen. 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 We find in these verses here that we read in verses 44, 41, look at what it said. It said, in, let's go to verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script. And his sling was in his hand and drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near to David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about, he saw David and disdained him, for he was but a, <clears throat> but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. Listen to what the big mouth David, Daniel said, or big mouth Philistine said. Do you know the giants in your lives holler loud, don't they? Oh, big oh, yeah. Come on. Amen. Yeah. You ever been around somebody who's got a big mouth? Oh, goodness, help us here. Oh, oh Lord, it's better hush, Charlie. Amen. <laughs> They got to be the center of attention. Come on. They, you got to hear them over everybody. That's what Goliath was. He had a big mouth. David shut it, didn't he? Come on, yeah. Amen. For verse 42, and when he looked upon him, he was disdained. Verse 43, and the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog? Can thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said, David, come here. Come to me and I'll give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the fields. The giant makes his boast. David, Goliath made his boast. How many times have you and I had to deal with a boastful enemy? Come on, yeah. Boastful enemy. I'll take you out. Yeah. You ain't going to make it. 
That was one thing I had to deal with when I first got saved. See, I backslid years and years ago before I ever got saved on this one. And the devil used to whisper in my ear, son, you didn't make it then. You ain't going to make it now. And he'd make his both. But you know what? I tell you what, I'm just as hard-headed as he is sometimes. And I tell you, we have to know that that the enemy, he'll boast, he'll boast against you. He'll come against you in so many different ways. He'll, he'll show his big mouth out uh, and show his thing uh, but you know what uh, David he never backed up did he uh, he kept on coming toward the enemy uh, and I think it's time that God's people begin to say okay listen to me devil uh, I'm telling you uh, that I don't know what's going to happen uh, but God does uh, and if God's going to bring me to it uh, he's going to bring me through it uh, and if he's going to put me in the battle uh, he said uh, he would never give me uh, put me in a battle uh, that he can't give me the victory of Amen. Verse 37, we didn't read in our text. But here's what the difference was in David. Verse 37, listen to what he said. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he'll deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord had moved upon David when he was watching him sheep. And the lion came out and David took a hold to him and took that uh, 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 took that sheep out of his mouth. And the bear came out and David uh, the spirit of the Lord moved upon David. My point is this you know what? If we try to battle some of these battles of ourselves and we try to think about them in the flesh certainly we'll become fearful certainly we'll become doubtful certainly we'll become defeated if we're not careful. But I'll tell you what we need, uh, and I need it more, uh, is we need the Spirit of God to move uh, upon us uh, and to touch us uh, like David did. Uh, he said he delivered me out of the line. Uh, he delivered me from the bear. Uh, and uh, bless God, he's going to deliver me uh, out of the hand uh, of the Philistine. Amen. Conquering the giants in our lives. Verse 38 and 39. I want to read that. And Saul armed David with his armor. And he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. David girded his sword upon his armor. And he essayed or he tried to go. For he had not proved it. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these. For I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. Saul armored David with his armor. Can I tell you something tonight? You can't fight wearing somebody else's armor. Huh? You can't fight wearing somebody else's armor. What do you mean, Brother Mark? You got to have your own armor. Huh? Now, thank God we can call upon one another. And we can call for prayer. Thank God for that. We need that. Thank God we can hold each other's hands. Thank God we can come together and we can hug and we can cry or we can whatever we need to do. Thank God for that. But the battle, ultimately, you got to fight your battle and you got to have your armor. You can't use my armor. My armor won't work for you. Amen. But the Bible says every man's dealt a measure of faith. You got to go with what you know of your God. Come on, church. Amen. We need to know you can't fight with another person armor. Amen. But you got to fight with what you know. And David couldn't fight with Saul. The armor was good for Saul. It caused Saul to be victorious in some of his battles. But David couldn't do it. He said, I've got to go. I ain't tried or I ain't proved them. In other words, I ain't tested them. But you know what? If you'll test God, God will show himself faithful. You know what armor that David had? He went and got five stones. He he went and got his sling and he went toward the enemy and he said this is the key. He said I don't come to you in the sword and the spirit but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of Israel. Amen. You 
can't fight wearing someone else's. We have to put on the whole armor of God that we can stand against the wiles of the devil. Man. Huh? We've got to keep on fighting. Yes. We've got to have that armor on. Amen. David was putting his faith in another kind of armor. The God who before had given him power over a bear and over a lion. That's right. 2 Timothy 4 and 18 said, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Listen to this, 1 Corinthians 2 and 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. Amen. My faith don't stand necessarily in man's logic. Right. Your faith should not stand necessarily in man's logic. Well, man will tear you up. Have you ever put it standing on your head if you ain't careful? But you got to put it in the power of God. Yeah. Put your faith in the power of God. I'm here to tell you that you'll conquer them giants. Amen. 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 David makes, or excuse me, the giant makes his big boast. He said, I'll give your flesh to the fowls of the air and the beast of the field. One of the greatest powers, as I've already said, in the enemy that he has over us is the imagination. That's right. The imagination. And we've all blown things out bigger than really what they should be. Yeah. Amen. And when the Philistines saw, in verse 51, when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, the Bible said they fled. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. David chooses his weapons. Goliath had a sword and a spear and a shield. David had something much more greater and more powerful. Someone who had not failed him in the past. That's right. Amen. Amen. Nor would he now. David came to him by his faith in God. David makes the God he serves bigger than the giants he's facing. Amen. Amen. Huh? Yes. See, we got this problem. We take our problems to God and we say, God, see how big my problems are? Yeah. When we ought to take God to the problems and say, problems, see how big my God is? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. We've got it reversed. I've done it. Oh, God, you got to help me here. Oh, it's a big one this time. Remember old Fred Sanford on the Sanford side? Oh, it's a big one this time. Amen. That was one of his things, wasn't it? Some of you know what a dumb man. That's what we say. Oh, God, it's a big one this time. I'm not making fun, okay? But I'm just here to tell you. And I've done it. We all have. But you know what? We need to know that the God that we serve is bigger than the problems that try to overtake us. Said, and all the earth may know, in verse 46, that they know that there's a God in Israel. Do the people that we see and come in contact with us, do they see how big our God is? Come on now. Or do they see how big our problems are? Yes. Huh? That's something to think about, eh? It is. Amen. Amen. Listen to what David said in verse 47. For the battle is the Lord's. And he'll give you into our hand. Yes. Amen. David was sure that on that very day his foe would fall. Verse, I'll read the rest of that first part of that verse 47 and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spirit for the battle is the Lord's and he'll give you into our hands well that's confidence right there ain't it? Yes, it is. that's confidence right there amen the Lord does not save with sword and spirit David trusted in the name of the Lord 
Amen. David might have been just a little fella. According to the scriptures, we didn't get into them, but you know the stories are said, but he served a great big God. Man. He served a great big God. Amen. The Lord was his God. Yeah, this was David's life. It was God. See, I've known people, and you too, have too. They weren't really committed to God. No. They just wanted him, you know, when they wanted him, and they didn't want him, when they didn't want him, and in and out of church, and don't know whether they want to go to church, don't know whether they want to be saved, don't know whether they want to go to heaven or what. Yeah. But David's life was God. Yeah, man. Is that us? No. I'm not going to say we're not going to have fears. I'm not going to say we're not going to. Folks, we all have them. Yes. But I said this Sunday morning, don't stay there. Come on. Don't stay there. Don't stay there. And I'll close with this. I don't know if you've ever noticed this. David conquered the giant. Yeah. He killed him. The Bible said that David, when he hit him, he hit him right between the eyes with that stone yeah. and put him down. Now, whether he killed him or not, we don't really tell us that. But we do know one thing. David cut his head off. Yeah, pretty clear then. That's pretty clear. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, Amen. He might have knocked him out. I don't know. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to debate that one. But I do know this. David said, I don't want him back. He ain't coming back alive. That's right. David didn't have a sword. You know what he did? He walked up, stood up on that good big giant and pulled his sword out of the, out of the giant's sheath. His own weapon. Yeah. Used his own weapon against him. Come yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. And he cut his head off. My point is this. If you're going to kill a giant, cut its head off. Yeah. If you don't, it's going to come back. Didn't the Bible tell us in Matthew, when you cast a demon out, and I'm not saying we're demon possessed, but he said when you cast a demon out of a, of a house, a route of yourself, amen, and it goes about into the four places and dry places and wonders about and comes back and sees that the house has been swept and garnished, but it's empty. Come on. Kill it. Amen. Don't let it come back. I ain't going to tell you you may not try to come back, but don't let it come back. Amen. 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 David said, I'll kill it. If that stone didn't kill it, I guarantee you he took his head off. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They always told me, my grandpa did when I was a child, uh, when you kill a snake, cut its head off. Because right. yeah. you don't know if that snake is dead or not. I tell you what, I killed a few around my house. And I tell you what, Brother Art, you know what I go for after I kill him? I go for that head. Because I'm going to take him out. And I tell you, it's time God's people begin to take out the, the enemy. Amen. Quit playing games with him. Kill that giant that we face in our lives. Amen. But listen to this. Think about this. Verse 2 of chapter 18. David had killed the giant, okay? And he put the rest of them on the run. I don't know if you ever caught this. And Saul took him that day and wouldn't let him no more go home to his father's house. When David killed the giant, he went to the father's house. Went to the house of the king. Went to the king's house. Huh? Come on. So I said, you ain't going back there where your dad is. You're going to the king's house. What do you say? Yes. When you do a battle and you face a giant and you kill it, you're going to the king's house. Oh. The heavenly father. Yes. Amen. Yes. Oh, how many has ever tasted of the victory after you fought the battle? 
That's what I'm talking about. When you fight the battle, God said, I don't want you to just stay out here going back to the sheep and going back to the fields. I mean, you're, you're coming to my house. Amen. David fed him a fiddle shed. Amen. But you know what? God, David said, or uh, David went to Saul's house, the king. You and I can go to the king's house. We can go to the king's house. Well, there's a time to fight. But I do believe when we get through with the battles, that God says, all right now, it's time to rest. Yeah. You remember when, and I'll close with this thought. Remember when Jesus was walking and he sent them out to cast out devils and to heal the sick and so forth? And they came back to him and said even the devils were subject to us and everything. The Bible said Jesus took them away to a place because they needed rest. They needed rest. And that's the only place you're going to find rest is in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you stand? Amen.